All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the interface segregation principle in this episode of Code Like a Pro, the fourth principle of the solid principles. So what is the idea? Well, the idea is to not force the client. The client could be um, people consuming your, your class um, or your, your object or other developers, right? Um, so that could be third party in-house but to make it so that they are not forced to depend on methods they do not use. That's the idea. So what does that actually mean? Well, it supports the what we've sort of been talking about, which is smaller classes or interfaces. Uh, this idea of role interfaces, which is essentially breaking out into the smaller classes and interfaces that should be defined and we'll, we'll give an example of that and this supports abstraction because as a application continues to grow we're going to start having these issues where i have to make one change in here and one change in there and one change over here to do this one change and so if we start following the solid principles and the interface segregation principle that abstraction will allow us to make those change in a much easier manner without having a lot of side effects, which is something we want to avoid. So how do we do it? Well, let's go ahead and give an example. Hey guys, I want to take a moment to recommend Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp to you. Dev Mountain's been a long-term sponsor of mine. I appreciate their support as I've help grow the channel and tell everyone about their great facilities. I've actually been to their Provo, Utah campus and it's beautiful. So if you're interested in a full stack JavaScript bootcamp, they provide housing alongside the tuition so you can get up and go today. They're one of the most affordable bootcamps in the world, in the States. And I highly suggest you check them out at devmountain.com. So let's take this very large interface here. And um, typically a large interface is, or a large class is into indicative of a um, very complex object and you have to say is this object does this object need to be that complex does it really handle this is that is this everything i want to be so so just sort of a red flag but you'll see here we have our vehicle interface um, just defining what our vehicle class would be right we have a git speed that returns a number a, a git vehicle type which is going to be a string um, you know, some, some financing things, you know, is tax paid? Are the lights on? Have we started the engine? Have we accelerated? Have we stopped the engine? The start radio, have we, um, that should be a function. Um, do we want to play a CD? Um, do we want to stop the radio? So we have all these sorts of various properties of what a car or a vehicle might have. And looking at this, this is going to cause us a lot of problems where every time we modify the vehicle class for any aspect, whether it's the engine or the music or the lights, whatever it may be, we're going to run into these issues where we are treating this vehicle object as one and the same. And, and the reality of the situation is that's not necessarily true. So how might we go ahead and fix this? Well, let's do a little bit of refactoring here where um, instead of just the I vehicle, we can have maybe an I lights, right? So let's have, define an interface here called I lights. And I, in, in TypeScript, you typically denote an interface with an I. Um, oftentimes, I, I'll build a abstract class because interfaces are just sort of eh. Um, and you can do a little bit some more complex interface and stuff, but um, I don't want to get too much into TypeScript. But if we have lights, why wouldn't we have a is lights on and have that over here and it'll be the same thing, right? Just returning a Boolean. So we go ahead and take that out and is lights off. Excellent. And uh, we could do another thing where let's go ahead and create a radio interface, right? Because we're, we're playing with the music and the radio. And uh, we would have our start, stop, and play CD. That's all of our radio object. And then uh, of our I engine, right? So let's see here. We have start engine, accelerate. That all looks like to be an engine. 
go ahead and do something like this. Oops. Interface I version. Excellent. And so now you'll see that we've sort of broken this out a little bit more and we can reuse these as needed. And if we needed to, let's go ahead and actually say we had a vehicle class and we wanted to consume these things, right? The vehicle class is going to extend I vehicle like so. Let's go ahead and import that. Now I want to extend I vehicle. No, extends. There we go. No, extend implements. Do I need to save this? Is that why it's not finding it? There we go. So, and you'll see here that we need to implement some functions, right? We want to implement the get speed, the get vehicle type is tax play. So we can go ahead and define public get speed and that'll do something. And we're going to say public uh, is tax payable. All right here for the time being, I'm just filling this out real quick. So we'll return that, just return two, one, something like that. And we have two more implementations and then we're gonna actually use the other interfaces in a second here so that we can consume those in a, in a more responsible manner if we felt that we needed to do that, right? So return this, just put an empty string here for the time being. Oh, this is just a property, excuse me. Uh, just for the sake of time, we'll go ahead and make that a function. And then we'll go ahead and throw that on there as well. And we'll just return true. All right, so now we've been able to actually uh, implement that in our vehicle class, but we might have other things that we want as well, where Maybe we have a radio of type I radio. Oops. And we have to export these as well. But, and then we'll go and we'll assign whatever properties this radio. I'd probably have a class in reality. But, what this gives us the ability to now is that all our radio logic is now separated out over here. We have our various interfaces and we can use them and it's all broken out to what it needs to be, right? And we've now separated out piece by piece so we don't have to, and abstracted it so that we don't have to rely on this massive vehicle interface or class for that matter. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, a lot of these principles will sort of fall into that whole they each sort of touch each other. Like some of this may feel very similar single responsibility principle. And some of you may be saying like, well, why am I importing, you know, why am I importing radio into the vehicle class? Well, you have to understand, let's say we wanted, so let's say one of our developers wanted to use just a radio, right? They had a need for a radio class and we wanted to follow that. If it wasn't broken out like this, they would then be forced to install the vehicle class just to use the radio. And so what we're doing is we're gonna abstract it, break it down a little bit so that you only care about the pieces that affect your development, that affect your code and support good object-oriented uh, principles. So as always guys, I hope you found that helpful. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and share and look forward to our next video, the dependency inversion principle, which is by far one thing that I would say I found, I didn't fully understand, but is by far or my favorite solid principle. And I think has made my software, my code writing taken to um, the next level. So I really hope you take particular interest in the dependency inversion principle. 
Uh, and I'm gonna give you a very real world example in uh, the Angular framework of how you would use this in a daily basis. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that, that video. See you guys next time. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.